Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. Windows Phone 7 Build 64.1.4 was just released for the emulator for developers. According to Microsoft, this is very, very close to what we're going to see when devices start shipping in just a couple of months. We're going to walk through Build 64.1.4 with you now and tell you what's different. Let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of what's new is to help the user experience be better. So it's faster, it's easier to understand what the icons mean. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna click around to a variety of these applications. Here I am on the home screen, there are all my tiles. They move around a little bit more smoothly than the last time we took a look at the emulator build. So let's jump into some screens here. So here we are in the phone application and things seem to whip up faster. Uh, you're gonna take notice of that soon. So if we dial a number, all of the screens are a lot more refined, as you can see. Here is the calling screen. We can open up the keyboard, do all sorts of things, and let's go back to the start screen because there's nothing interesting here, except I do want to show you one thing. Uh, you see these buttons here at the bottom? In previous builds of Windows Phone 7, we didn't know what they meant, but now if you tap on these three dots and you get the expanded menu, you will always get a little caption underneath each button. Very, very helpful. Uh, really will help you to understand the icons while keeping the operating system clean. Let's jump back. If we go into the People tab, we can't do that much in here. I have one contact, and we can swipe to the right. It says Set Up Facebook, but when you go to Add an Account, you can't add any account. Twitter, Facebook, Exchange, Gmail, it just it doesn't work in the emulator, so it's really uh, difficult to show you that. But of course, this is the People Hub, which is where all the different feeds come through, all of your pictures, all of your contacts, what's going on with the various people that you keep in touch with. So nothing really different there. The calendar is mostly unchanged, except that, of course, as I mentioned, if you click on these three buttons, you get little captions underneath of the icons. If we click on calendars, uh, you can have a variety of calendars synchronizing to the same place. So you can have one for Gmail, one for Exchange, uh, and so on and so forth. I added something there to um, remind myself to film the video as a demonstration. We can flip to another view. We can go to uh, the month view and go up and down. Very smooth, very fast, fluid interface here. Uh, we can go into messaging, which has been spruced up as well. I have one conversation with Bob, and look how nice it is. It's just a simple speech bubble uh, that lets you know what you said last. You can add an attachment, which would, of course, be a message. Let's jump back to the start screen. Email setup, can't do anything with this. It says add an account and you can't, you can't add an account. So let's go back to this screen. Xbox Live hasn't been changed much and I hope you're seeing how fast this has become. Before it was a little bit slow, it seemed that the animations were taking too long, but now everything is just so fluid, uh, which is great to see. Internet Explorer is working very well, so we can actually go to a website. Let's go to pocketnow.com. The keyboard actually makes a different sound now than it did before. A little bit more subdued, which is good. So this does have internet connectivity, so it's loading pocketnow.com pretty cool, as if you were to use the device uh, in, in front of you. Very fast internet rendering speeds, of course. This is on an emulator, so it's hard to tell how fast it would be. Scrolling is super smooth. You can double tap to zoom in, of course, and it resizes the column beautifully. Um, it's tough to say uh, how it will respond to multi-touch because I'm not using it on a multi-touch computer. Of course, you can do the pinch to zoom. But things are, are loading almost as fast as a desktop browser, and I hope this is a sign of, of things to come um, for the Windows Phone 7 browser. And we have some options. We can go to settings. We can add as a favorite. Uh, right here, we can click OK, and this is now in our favorites menu. We can go to the favorites list here by going to the star, and you can see your history. Let's go back with the back button. You can open up multiple windows, which is nice. Let's see how it handles that. So we're going to go up here to engadget.com. And here it comes through. Okay, seems to have stopped. Of course, this is an emulator, so it may be a little bit buggy, but we can easily switch between pages and get this nice little animation, a great and simple way to uh, move around between multiple pages. If we dive into settings, we have a few things we can change. We can allow cookies, um, let Bing suggest sites as I type. Of course, Microsoft's going to use Bing. You can set your preference to have mobile version or desktop version show up. 
when you use the web browser. So let's get out of this back to the start screen. Uh, the Pictures Hub is generally unchanged, although it's a little bit more smooth. So um, here we have what's new. So you can see if people have updated pictures on Facebook and so on. We can go to all pictures, and there are some pictures included on the device. So we can tap, we can swipe. Look how smooth the animations are. And it's, right now it's actually being slow, but a minute ago it was very smooth. Um, we can double tap to zoom in. It does it almost instantly. We can. We should be able to tap on the tap and hold it on the picture, and we get a pop-up menu. So we can use this as the wallpaper, kind of an ugly wallpaper. We can move this around to get it just right. Click the check, and let's see if it actually set it. Go back to the home screen. I think the wallpaper would be the lock screen, and we'll try the lock screen in a few minutes. So let's continue down here. We have music and video. This is the Zune application, and it's, again, much smoother than it was in previous builds. So we can swipe to the right, swipe to the left. There's not much you can do with it right now because it's not connected to the marketplace. But you can just see the transitions and going in and out of these various items. It's just super fluid. It kind of whips into place, if that sort of makes sense. Back to the home screen we go. Um, and then we have Maps, the, the Bing Maps application, which is actually quite functional in this build. We get the waiting dots up at the top. It says Bing is not available, so maybe it won't work for us in this demonstration. Let's see. Perhaps we can try coming back to it. But it does work, and it works quite nicely, kind of as you would expect um, on another smartphone device. Now, of course, we can move around these tiles like we did before. That hasn't changed, so we tap and hold. We can slide things around and you get this little uh, unpin button and it will remove something from your start screen. But of course you would have to do that one at a time because the um, when you tap and hold it only lets you action on one item if you want to take it off the screen. Now let's talk about the other stuff that's on here. If we swipe to the right, we get all of the applications. And now Microsoft hasn't changed this yet, which is really surprising because it's kind of ugly to be honest. It's just a long list of applications and when you start loading on third-party apps, this list is going to get long, and there's not going to be an easy way to n navigate this menu unless you're adding the programs to your start screen. So we've talked about some of these things. Alarms, very basic functionality here. You can add a new alarm and click the back button. Calculator, these are standard built-in applications. They've been slightly modified in this latest build of Windows Phone 7. Scrolling down, we have Marketplace. Won't let us connect to Marketplace. We have the People Hub. What I haven't shown you yet is Office 2010 in this build and settings. Let me go into Office 2010 now. And this has been further refined again so we can explore Word. We'll go into the Word application. You get this tutorial. This is a lot more, uh, it, a lot more uh, evolved than what we saw previously, which is nice. So um, we can scroll down and that's great. Let's open up a new document. It looks like it's making me edit this, so I'm going to try to find a way to open up a new document. And here we can add comments to the document. Really great collaboration features uh, within Office 2010 Mobile. That's really one of the hallmarks of Windows Phone 7. So, so this is great. You could type. And you get the idea from there. You can should be able to press enter and well let's go back to the office hub uh, don't save changes so very simple pop-up metro like interface of course we're used to that sharepoint integration we can open a, a document or list on microsoft sharepoint server or open in the url um, and let's jump into excel real quick before we dive into settings so this is just a look at excel mobile and it's a lot more powerful than what it was in previous versions of uh, Windows Mobile. And that's great because Microsoft Office is really one of Microsoft's key products. And it's great to see that they're really spending a lot of time on it here in Windows Phone uh, 7. So it has saving functionality. And you get the idea. So let's go back and dive into settings for a minute before we conclude this video. Settings have been updated a little bit. Something new is that you can change the theme to a variety of different colors now. Before it was only three colors, but now they've extended this. I hope they extend this further because, some, I mean, these colors aren't the, the most fantastic colors on the planet. I'd like to have a little bit more choice. And so, of course, we can change this to lime. We can change the background to light. Um, the black background's more suited for AMOLED displays. Well, this is good for LCD. So if we go back to the home screen, everything is green. 
spruce it up a little bit. Let's jump back into settings here. Very, very fluid interface. I, I'm really excited about how smooth this has become. We can change the ringtone and sound, the Bluetooth, the lock wallpaper. Uh, we can change that to a variety of wallpapers. And these are really nice preloaded wallpapers, by the way. So we can set that. And you can set the today's screen timeout and jump back. And keyboard settings, ease of access. None of this stuff is, is terribly new. Let me go to the about phone so you can see the build number and everything. It's built obviously 6414. This is apparently pretty much the final build or very, very close to the final build. So what you see here is what you're going to get more or less when you get a Windows Phone 7 uh, device in the fall. So also you can drill into application specific settings, which is kind of a play of what the iPhone does. Um, so you can access these same settings within these applications or you can come to the settings menu and do it individually. So we can go back to Internet Explorer and you're going to say this, see the same exact settings that I showed you a minute ago. And we can dive in to specific application settings from here. So a lot of improvement from what we saw in a previous build of Windows Phone 7. This is almost ready for prime time. This is pretty much how it's going to look. It's faster, it's easier to use. Uh, we can't wait till we can actually get a device in our hands and use it for uh, this, this operating system is very, very interesting and it's shaping up to look really nice. So please thumbs up the video if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for more Windows Phone 7 videos and videos on other smartphones as well. That's it for now.